And um, just to warn you that today's webinar is now being recorded um, and we'll circulate the link later. So if you do have colleagues um, or peers who'd be interested in this webinar, um, then you'll be able to share it with them and we'll be using it to share with others who couldn't attend today. Um, so um, you'll notice that the functionality we have this morning uh, means that everybody is muted at the moment. So the way this will work, we'll go through the presentations first of all. Um, so my colleagues at CDP will be presenting first and then we'll hand over to uh, the ADEM team. Um, and um, so if you do have questions or comments um, as we're going along, you'll notice that there is a Q&A box um, which you can access through the settings um, in, um, in, in WebEx. Um, so if you've got any questions that you'd like us to address, feel free to type those in that Q&A box. Um, and there's, I think there's a comments function as well if you want to use that. Um, and then we'll come back to those later. Um, but we will have a bit of an opportunity um, for um, discussion and questions later on during the proceedings. Um, so, um, first of all, let's do a quick round of introductions. Um, so, um, my role um, at CDP um, is as Senior Manager for Assessing Low Carbon Transition, or ACT, project. Um, and I'm joined on the call today by my colleagues, um, Alistair Palmer and uh, Dua Zera. Um, so, Alice, are you there? Hi, Esther. Hi, Hi everyone. Um, yes, my name is Alice De Palma, and uh, as Esther mentioned, I'm on the ACT team at CDP working on methodology development. And do I see that um, you're automatically muted, so I'm going to unmute you, so if you want to introduce yourself as well. That should be done now. Hi everyone, can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Hi everyone, uh, my name is Dua Zera and um, I'm also on the CDP team working on the ACT project as a technical officer. Thank you guys. Uh, so, um, Edouard and team, um, would you like to introduce yourselves? Uh, thank you Esther, so hello everybody. My name is Edouard Fordorin from ADEM, uh, the French uh, Environmental Agency. Uh, so I'm involved in the methodological development in ACT uh, and the second action in ACT for me is to develop the, to implement the, uh, the French uh, voluntary program uh, about ACT, uh, so in the French context. Thanks, and do we have um, Anaïs Gorgodon? Uh, hi everyone, uh, I'm also working at ADEM, uh, working on the ACT uh, initiative on the methodology. Thanks, and uh, Marlène. Yes, hi everyone, I'm Marlène Dresch, I work at ADEM on methodology development for the ACT initiative. Great, um, so um, Alice, could we see the agenda and I'll quickly run through that. Great, so on today's call, we'll have a brief introduction to ACT. I know um, many of you are familiar with it now, but um, we want to um, ensure that we've run through that. We'll talk about some of the benefits you can expect if you participate in the road test portion of the project. We'll talk about the timeline and some practical details, um, such as company commitments um, and what you can expect um, if you attend. And then finally, um, how to participate. Uh, and I think we're also joined today um, by um, a special guest uh, from one of our companies um, who's going to be talking a little bit about um, their decision to already participate in the road test. Um, so um, I'll now hand over to Alice um, to proceed with the presentation. Thank you. Thank you very much, Esther. Uh, thank you everyone for joining. So I'll just start and uh, tell you a bit more about what is ACT. So we'll briefly go through that and then um, I'll just also uh, do a quick overview of the work that we have done so far as well. So what is ACT? Um, the ACT initiative was um, established uh, and well co-founded by ADEM, uh, which is the French Environment and Energy Agency and CDP. 
Um, it was, it's been going on since COP21. Uh, and what ACT is, is it's an accountability framework. Um, and the framework was used as a basis to develop sectoral methodologies in order to assess company strategies. So we're looking at the company strategies and their actions and how they contribute towards the mit mitigation goals of the Paris Agreement. Um, in order to do that, so we use uh, each sectoral methodologies to produce an ACT assessment. Um, and what this assessment is, it's an analysis of company data against certain quantitative and qualitative indicators. So you can see here in the brackets is the couple of examples. So uh, we've got the target module, which looks at quantitative data. Um, for example, the business mod model looks more at um, qualitative information. Um, and ACT really takes a holistic approach, so we also look at um, different dimensions, such as consistency between all of these, um, all of this information. So, to, for instance, do the actions of the company, uh, are they consistent with um, their overall target, for example? And then these indicators are weighted differently depending on the sector. Um, and what uh, the result of this assessment is, is it gives us an ACT score or an ACT rating. So I think I'll use um, both terms. And what this ACT score tells us is um, how ready and how far along a company is on their low carbon transition. So just to let you know who's involved in the ACT initiative, so I've just mentioned the, the co-founders, the so CDP and ADEM. Um, so there's a couple of projects currently going on under the ACT initiative, but this project um, working on sectoral methodology development and road test is a project funded by EIT Climate Kick, which is um, a body of the European Union. And on this work, we are uh, supported by um, multiple consultants um, who are helping us develop these sectoral methodologies uh, and providing um, essential technical support. So the ACT rating includes three dimensions. Um, so again, the ACT rating is a result of the ACT assessment and it represents the readiness of the company to transition to a low carbon economy. Um, and that ACT rating is where you can see on the screen in the middle um, inside the little hexagon. So the current score that you have as an example is 20A plus um, and each hexagon represents a dimension of the score. So I'm just going to go through um, all three of them. So the first one, the one in red, is the performance score. Um, and what it does is it measures align the alignment of a company strategy with a low carbon economy. And it does that using um, nine modules that um, range from, so it can look at targets, it can look at investment in research and development, um, it can also look at the climate expertise uh, of company management, um, but also the engagement of a company with uh, their suppliers, with their clients, uh, with policy as well, um, and it also looks at the business model of the company. So the first four modules on that list focus on the quantitative aspect of the low carbon transition of the company. Um, and modules five to nine look at the qualitative aspect uh, of the assessment. And then in terms of um, the rating, it ranges from one all the way to 20, 20 being the highest that you can get. Right, then moving on to uh, the one in the middle, the uh, I guess purple or maroon, or one of them, uh, the narrative score. So what the narrative score does is it goes beyond the performance uh, indicators and it allows the analyst to interpret the data of the company's progress um, towards in transition using multiple sources and um, comparing that against four criteria. So it allows the analyst to go pre beyond the preset indicators and include um, a holistic range of sources and information. 
So, for instance, it will look at information um, such as whether the company is in transition towards profitable activities, um, whether uh, there's consistency between the company's transition plan and its business strategy. Uh, it will also look at things like reputation, whether there's been any environmental controversies um, or any anything that comes up that may hamper um, the credibility of the company towards uh, their transition. And finally, it also takes into account risks. So any risks that could undermine the company's profitability and its ability to successfully implement that um, transition plan. And finally, the last score is a trend score. Um, and this score aims to forecast changes in the company's alignment with a low carbon transition. Uh, and it aims to answer the question, if the assessment was to be repeated again in the near future, would the company's score be better, worse, or stay the same? And then a combination of these three dimensions then gives us a complete um, ACT rating. Right, so then just to give you a bit more information about what's been done so far by the ACT initiative. Um, so you've got a timeline on the screen and some of the boxes in there have been uh, divide it into three steps. So the first two steps, methodology development and methodology road test are all part of the um, overall development of the methodology. So the first one is um, drafting that first methodology in collaboration with experts. And then what the road test does is we're testing that methodology with companies um, and usually making uh, some updates at the end uh, based on the feedback that we receive, uh, based on that road test. Um, and that last step assessments, we're also using the finalized methodologies to then carry out uh, full act assessments on companies as well. Um, so just to go through it in chronologically, so uh, as I mentioned, the ACT initiative started um, after COP21 and 2016 was focused on developing the ACT framework, uh, which uh, are the kind of the, the guide and it developed the, the, the ACT principles that we use to then develop sectoral methodologies. So then after that, uh, we developed three sectoral methodologies, so electric, electric utilities, auto retail, and then a road test of these three methodologies uh, was done on 20 companies. Um, after that, there was a more local version of the road test that was carried out in France, um, and that was done to ensure that the framework could also the framework and the methodologies could also be used for small and medium companies, um, and that was carried out in 2018. After that, we got started developing two other sectoral methodologies in construction and real estate, and then we moved on to um, the sectors of cement, transport, and oil and gas in 2019, uh, which is what the road test that we're presenting to you today is focusing on uh, this year on these three sectors. Uh, and then just to mention in terms of the assessments, we've also been carrying uh, ACT assessments of auto companies and electric utility companies in partnership with uh, the World Benchmarking Alliance um, and that we are currently uh, carrying out the electric utility ones. Right, uh, so now what I'll do is I'll present the three sectoral methodologies that we've been working on very briefly. So cement, transport and oil and gas. Uh, and I'll give you an overview of um, what's included in the scope of these methodologies. What does a low carbon aligned company look like in these sectors? Um, and finally, just uh, quick overview of which modules have been, um, should be noted. So to start with uh, the cement methodologies, so first question is, 
which emission, emission sources are we included? So what we've uh, noticed is that clinker and cement production represent 90% of the total emissions of cement. So we are including emission sources from uh, cement production and clinker and cement production in the methodology. Uh, but we are excluding emissions from extracting raw materials, um, as well as any emissions from the use phase and end of life phase uh, of cement are there because they are very low compared to production emissions. Then which companies can be assessed? Um, any cement production company can be assessed using the cement methodology. Um, just one thing to note is that we are making a differentiation between companies producing their own clinker and companies buying their clinker. Um, and you'll see that a bit more in the next slide. In terms of what does a low carbon alliance cement company look like? Um, and you'll see this is something that's quite similar across the three methodologies. Um, it's a company that has a public transition plan, um, which details uh, operational steps in order to achieve their low carbon objectives. Um, they need to demonstrate uh, a trend in terms of lowering their emissions intensity over time and um, working on developing low carbon, low carbon alternatives to their products. So the company needs to have a science based target um, and it needs to be heavily investing in um, research and development projects uh, relating to low carbon products. And finally, um, through all of these elements, the company just needs to show a willingness to achieve the goals of the low carbon transition. Right, and um, very briefly, in order to highlight some of the important modules. So, as I mentioned, the, the methodology requires that um, clinker producers and clinker buyers be separated. So we've got two different versions. So um, as you can see in the two different columns. Um, so the first one is uh, for companies that produce their own clinker, so integrated companies. And the second one is for companies that buy clinker from external suppliers, um, which are usually blenders or grinding operators. So for the first version, um, the most important module was identified as being the material investment module, which looks at the performance of um, the company's assets. And then in terms of non-integrated companies, so the second column, uh, the, the weight is shifted from the material investment module to the sole product performance module. So instead of looking at the company's asset, which um, is not, doesn't work for the second version, we are looking at uh, considering the scope three emissions of the cement produced through the sole product performance module. Uh, right, now I'll just move on to the transport methodology. So uh, the transport methodology, so first of all, which emission sources are we including? So we're including emission sources that are linked to the energy used by vehicles in operation. So that can be emissions from direct combustions of fuel in the vehicle engine um, and emissions linked to the production of energy. Any emissions from uh, the manufacturing of vehicles is excluded. And then uh, which companies can be assessed using this methodology? Uh, so any transport operators for each of the subsectors that you can see here in the table uh, can be assessed using the methodology. And just to go through the subsectors, so we've got um, at the top rail, then road, um, water transportation and air transportation. Uh, just to note that transport manufacturers cannot be assessed using the methodology. And we are also excluding light duty vehicles and 
personal mobility by car because that is already covered by another methodology that was developed that is the auto methodology uh just going over quickly over the um, what does a low carbon aligned transport company look like um again it's a company that has a science based target for each of um their transport activity whether they've got um whether they operate within one sector or multiple um, and the target needs to have a time horizon that covers the lifetime of the vehicles that they own or that they subcontract either. Uh, the company's planning needs to detail investment in low carbon vehicles or um, including some criteria in order to select uh, their subcontractors to make sure that they align with a low carbon transition. They need to have an investment strategy in place uh, to be investing in R&D and in trainings for their staff um, and to clearly focus on the low carbon transition. And they need to demonstrate a trend in lowering their emissions intensity of either their own fleet or their um, subcontractors over the last five years. Um, and finally, again, uh, all of these elements need to show a consistent willingness to achieve the goals of the low carbon transition from the company. Um, and that is, uh, it's also very important for them to be developing new transport business models. In terms of uh, the, the modules of the transport methodology. So again, you'll notice that we've got two versions here, uh, depending, so we've got two cases. The first uh, one is whether the company operates its own fleet, and the second one is whether it subcontracts uh, the transport services. So, um, and again, uh, in the first case, um, a lot of weight is put on the material investment module, looking at the performance of the company's uh, fleet. Uh, and in the second case, that weight is transferred over to the sole product performance module, looking at the scope three emissions um, of that fleet. And um, something that you might notice is in many cases, um, companies would actually be doing both um, and for these situations the company would be evaluated twice and the final score would be the average of both scores. Now moving on to the uh, final methodology which is oil and gas. So starting again with uh, which emission sources are included in the methodology. So all scope one, two and three emissions um, from all of the activities listed in that first bullet point are included in the methodology. Um, so that is oil and gas exploration and production, biomass production, oil and gas transport, oil refining, storage, electricity production and distribution in retail. In terms of um, which companies can be assessed using the oil and gas methodology, so only the companies that have both significant climate impact and significant mitigation levers can be covered by this methodology. Um, and so that means that the companies that can be assessed using the methodology are integrated oil and gas companies, um, integrated gas utilities, exploration and production pure players, all refining and marketing pure players, service station pure players, all products marketing pure players, and finally gas retail pure players. Um, so what does a low carbon aligned oil and gas company look like? Again, you'll see similar elements. So it's a company that um, has a public transition plan that um, operates so that details operational steps to achieve their objectives. Uh, the company needs to demonstrate a trend in terms of lowering their, their intensity um, on their entire value chain, so including um, all emissions, and they need to be uh, investing in developing low carbon projects. Uh, the company needs to have science-based targets on every segment of the value chain. 
um, and the the targets, their transition plan, and their past and recent actions need to show a willingness to achieve the goals of the low carbon transition. And finally, so oil and gas value chains have very similar upstream activities, but midstream and downstream activities are significantly different. Um, so they are analyzed separately and the modules are also weighted quite differently uh, depending on the type of company. So what you'll see is that the, the higher the value value chain, the more important the, the material investment, um, which is the, the performance of the assets. And as we go down the value chain, we focus on, we start focusing more on the performance of the product. And then another thing to note is that for downstream players, um, collaboration with suppliers is essential to achieving a low carbon transition. Right, and that is my last slide. I just wanted to highlight that we've got a public consultations currently happening for all three of these methodologies. Um, so you've got the links for each of them. So the cement one is closing today, so that doesn't give uh, a lot of time, but the transport and oil and gas methodologies are open for feedback and input until mid-April. So we do encourage you to go and have a look at them and provide your valuable expertise for us to improve the methodologies. Right, and now I will um, pass it over to my colleague Edoua, I think. Yeah, you're the one speaking uh, and I can move the slides for you. Thank you. Thank you, Alice, for, uh, for the introduction on ACT and the summary of the three ACT methodologies we want to road test now. And so, yes, I will focus on the process uh, of the road test and I will begin with the benefits uh, for you to, to, to be involved and to participate. Uh, so the first one is you will uh, benefit uh, for free from an act assessment of your low carbon strategy, uh, which will be done by a consultant, uh, an expert consultant on act, because uh, it's a consultant which is uh, who is trained uh, to the act methodology. Uh, it's for free because it's a road test, so it's a first uh, first assessment. And, uh, and it's an opportunity uh, for you to, uh, to have an act assessment and for us to, uh, to have a feedback from you in order to improve the, the methodology. Uh, the second benefit is to be involved in this initiative, which is innovated uh, because it allows you to, uh, to compare your carbon strategy with uh, decarbonization pathway, uh, relevant decarbonization pathway of your sector and it will be also the opportunity for you to identify your uh, areas for Im improvement in terms of low carbon transition. Uh, the third benefit if, uh, is if necessary, if necessary sorry, to, to, to have a training about ACT or an introduction about ACT methodology uh, to, to make progress and to, to reach uh, autonomy on, uh, on this topic. Uh, thanks to the results, the, the, uh, the first benefit is to, to be able to communicate to your partners, investors, stakeholders uh, about your uh, efforts to, to reduce your gas, uh, green gas, uh, greenhouse gases sorry, emissions. Uh, and so, as I said, uh, you will be able also to, uh, to improve the act methodology by sharing your expertise uh, thanks to this road test. Uh, as I said, it's a road test, so we need your expertise also to, uh, to improve and to have a more robust methodology at the end. And uh, it will be also the opportunity to involve your staff uh, in the improvement of the environmental performance of, of your company. So you have a lot of, uh, of benefits in, uh, in being involved in, the, in this initiative. And uh, we hope to, uh, to have a lot of, uh, of companies in this road test. Um, Next slide, please, Alice. Uh, so about uh, the process. Uh, so it's a very generic process uh, linked to, uh, to an assessment. Uh, you will have uh, four phases for the road test. The first one 
is uh, the kickoff meeting with the consultant. So it's more an introduction to the ACT initiative. It's an opportunity to discuss the scope of the project and to prepare uh, the next steps. Uh, the second one is uh, data collection, uh, so the collection of data which are needed to, uh, to do the, uh, the act assessment. Uh, for this, uh, you will do this job internally, but uh, you will be able to, uh, to, to, to have a support from a consultant if, uh, if necessary. Uh, the third phase is the act assessment itself. It will be done by the consultant, uh, by the act trained consultant, and uh, the consultant will at the end present you uh, the results of the assessment uh, for you in an individual way. And the last step is the step of uh, sharing experience. So we propose you to have a meeting with companies, with the other companies involved in the road test, with the other stakeholders also uh, involved in the methodological development to share feedback, to share the lessons learned and to improve uh, the methodology uh, at the end. Um, so we would like to have uh, a sample of 15 companies maximum per sector. So we have here three sectors, oil and gas, transport and cement. So we would like to have 15 companies max uh, for each of them. Uh, and as I said, uh, there, there will be a support which will be provided by, uh, by, a, next, by a consultant which is expert on ACT because it will, he, this consultant is trained to, uh, to the ACT methodology. So uh, as I said, the consultant will help you with the data collection if needed, will assess uh, your strategy, your mitigation strategy uh, with your data you will, uh, you will uh, collect. And at the end, you will do the act assessment and share the final assessment with, uh, with you. In terms of timelines, uh, we would like to, to begin in May. Uh, we will begin in May to, uh, to finish in November this year. Uh, so first step is the kickoff meeting and the introduction of act. It will be uh, in, uh, in May. After that, we will have a second phase uh, between uh, end of May and September with the data collection uh, for the act assessment and the act assessment itself uh, by, uh, by the consultant. Between September and October, uh, it's a feedback, uh, feedback time slot. So uh, there will be meeting uh, with the consultant in order to, 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 to have the individual results of, uh, of act. And between October and November this year, uh, we would like to, uh, uh, to, to, we have to have an improvement process of the act methodology by sharing uh, your, uh, your experience and uh, your, uh, your expertise on, uh, on low carbon transition. Um, about commitments and guarantees, so we would like to guarantee you some elements, some key elements uh, for this road test. The most important one is about confidentiality. Uh, so individual data about your climate strategy and the individual score uh, about uh, um, assessed with, uh, with the ACT initiative uh, are for you and they won't be communicated, of course, externally. Uh, it's only for you and, uh, and there is a confidentiality uh, for that. We would like, uh, nevertheless, we would like to communicate about this, uh, this road test, but we will only communicate uh, aggregated uh, results at a sectoral level, and we will uh, also communicate uh, the name of the company which are involved in the road test. So only the name of the company, only uh, aggregated results at the sectoral level, but of course, your data, your score won't be communicated externally. Uh, the second guarantee is to provide you and to be supported by an act trained consultant, as I said uh, previously. But we would like also to have commi commitments from your side, from your side of companies. Uh, the first one is, of course, to, uh, to, to, to have a project leader, leader for, for, this, uh, for this project. Uh, and to be actively engaged in the process. Uh, thanks to the previous road test, uh, we can say that you will have to dedicate between five and 10 working days uh, for, this, uh, for this project uh, by considering data collection, but also meetings 
with the consultants meetings with us uh, in order to uh, to share your experience so it's around five to uh, to ten working days of course you will have to collect data which are required to uh, to do an act assessment and what is important also is to take part to this project uh, until the end because it's important uh, for us to do uh, uh, the process all the process in order to, uh, to 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 have feedback and to uh, and to uh, uh, and to to improve the, the act methodologies and to complete the, the act road test and the last commitment is to agree uh, that ADEM and CDP will communicate about your participation to this road test. Uh, and as I said just before, the assessment results of the company, of your company, will remain uh, confidential. Uh, last point about the process uh, on the road test is how to participate. Uh, you have to complete an application form uh, before the 11th of May, so it's now in uh, one month and a half. Uh, so do not hesitate if you are interested in this road test to complete the application form. All the materials are online uh, thanks to our ACT website, which is uh, actinitiative.org uh, slash sign up. You will have all the materials to um, for the for the road test. Uh, you have a, you have a short description of, uh, of the road test. Uh, for each sector, you will have, you will benefit of uh, the call for proposal. And so uh, you, it's, uh, yeah, it's uh, two pages on the road test for each sector. And you will also have uh, the terms of references. You will need to uh, complete, sign, and there is also an application form to, uh, to complete in order to, um, to participate to the, to the road test. So do not hesitate to go on our website. And if you have some questions, some comments about this road test, uh, you can also contact us directly thanks to our email addresses, which are uh, available on, uh, on the screen, on the slide. Uh, last point. Uh, so as I said, we, we, have, we will have sample of 15 companies max per sector. Uh, so if more than 15 companies apply, we will need to select uh, some of companies in order to have uh, a sample uh, with a good distribution uh, between the following criteria. So we will take into consideration the size of the company. We will uh, consider the geographic distribution uh, also of the companies and the activities which are carried out by the, by the company in order to have a well-balanced uh, sample for the for the road test we can for for the road test in general way we can have more specific criteria uh, according to the sector but if for transport for cement and oil and gas uh, we have no more specific criteria than the three uh, I, uh, I mentioned uh, i guess it's all on the road test uh, process, uh, so do not hesitate to, uh, to ask questions thanks to the uh, Q&A uh, space uh, on, the, on the webinar. But before answering the question, I will leave the floor to, I don't know, Esther or Alice uh, in order to have a testimony uh, from our guest star uh, with uh, Joao Catarino. Uh, so I'll leave you the floor. Ciao, are you with us? I thought uh, that uh, Alice was going to say something. So, good morning to you all. Uh, I will just do a brief presentation of the company and the work that we developed in, in the team. And if you have any any question, you can ask me through the through the through the chat or through the the Q and A. And I will will answer after it. Uh, so. Gulp is a, is a Portuguese-based company, an integrated energy company that operates, that are, are present in all the business segments from the oil and gas upstream to the, to the downstream and also in the, in the power business. Um, first at, at Martin and more, more recently uh, also in the power generation through cogeneration and uh, and the renewables. Um, <clears throat> so I work at at the safety and sustainability department, uh, be re being responsible for managing all the 
environment, CO2 and, and energy topics. And as you may understand, at least in the pre-COVID-90, until the pre-COVID-90 period, 95% uh, of our work was related with decarbonization and, and CO2. Um, and we worked a lot in in the past two two years to work on in metrics and, and indicators to that we we could provide to our board of directors and to our ex executive committee in order to to incorporate the the variable the carbon variable in the decision making at the company at in the old levels um, and for that we we worked through carbon metrics we thought about the the carbon the old carbon footprint um, idea and framework and try to to adapt it to to the to the reality of the company and to the reality of the of the new world to the same in a different way um, and also to to guarantee that we have a strong internal framework because we have some guidelines as you know as for example, the, the GEG protocol. However, this protocol as a guideline is not able to, to, to answer to all our challenges. And it's, it's a business-wide protocol with, with no uh, sector specification, uh, which uh, sometimes also raise some, some questions and some doubts to, to us in terms of uh, how should we apply the, the principles or the guidelines of the, of the protocol in, in our specific business. Um, given this old work that we made in metrics, indicators, and create what we call uh, carbon data intelligence or something like that to, to our top management, um, we engage with, with the ACT initiative uh, mainly because of, of two things. Uh, first of all, we understood that it, it will be it, it it will be and it was it wasn't it it is going still but um it is a group and a, and a forum where we can discuss all these topics deeply and uh, with uh, a great level of knowledge um at least in in the oil and gas sector and in the geg emissions uh knowledge related and applicable to the to the oil and gas sector and secondly, um, we we thought that all these initiatives, all these group discussions, all these uh, forums, will in some way lead us to some more applicable information and some more applicable guidelines that we can use further. Uh, because this is the the main the main challenge that we have is to create or to develop the sector uh, and globally sector, sector wide too uh, developed something that could be comparable and that could be understandable for for everyone by everyone and for everyone um i think this is the quick summary of our work and the main reasons why we we engage with tech and with adam and cdp um, feel free to ask anything that you that you want to do with Thank you. Um, Alice, are you able to connect? Did you have some additional questions? Thanks, Esther. Uh, and thank you, Joao, for your um, for your explanations as well. That was really useful to, to understand uh, why you're involved with that and why you want to participate in the road test. Um, I think we, I can see one question that came through the chat, so I shared it with everyone. Um, and so I guess we can start taking questions now. So if you do have any questions, please feel free to, to chat them in the, to type them in the chat. Uh, make sure to select all participants so that everyone can see them. Um, and to get started, so we've got a question about the cement methodology. And Malin, I might direct it to you because uh, I'm not sure I fully understand it. So 
let me know and then if we need more clarifications uh we can ask as well but i thought maybe you might you might get it on the first try more than i do um so the question is what about captive power generation within the cement plant um is it included in the boundary of the methodology or not yeah, thank you alice um well i, I if i correctly understand and the question and um, Ravi Chandra perhaps could, could tell me so uh, via the chat. Um, yes, uh, the boundary for CO2 emissions includes the captive power, power generation within the cement plants because uh, these are uh, CO2 emissions, um, but it will um, uh, how to say that? Um, it's in the boundaries, but uh, we will. Uh, uh, you can improve or reduce those emissions by using, for example, biomass or um, waste out of biomass or something like that. I hope I correctly understood the question and I and that I answered the question too. Thank you, Marlene. Okay, I can't see anything else. I think we can wait a couple of minutes, see if um, anyone else has any other questions. I can see question in the question and answer space on the on the webinar. Uh, and there is a question from Alan Newitz for the transport sector, uh, which is, do you provide absolute assessment uh, for the transport sector or within a mode? Uh, because there are such big performance differences between modes. Uh, so for the transport sector, we the objective is to provide an act assessment for a transport company. So if the transport company operates only one mode, it's quite easy. Uh, if a transport company operates uh, more than one mode, we will focus on each mode, uh, compare the, uh, the performance and objectives, objectives sorry, uh, regarding the relevant uh, low carbon pathway for, uh, for each mode. And at the end, we will aggregate all the results uh, into one result in order to assess the uh, low carbon uh, performance of the company itself. So yes, in case of a lot of modes operated by the company, we need to focus on each of them and after aggregate the, the result uh, for the transport company. Thank you, Edouard. Um, I think we just got one more question that came through the chat about the oil and gas methodology. Um, I think I will direct it at you, Anais, if that's okay. And the question is, um, could you share more information about the assessment of the target for the oil and gas industry, um, if it is science-based, and what does it include? Um, okay, so uh, for the targets, we are, um, uh, yeah, so actually using the, um, the SDA uh, methodology, where we, we, we have a sector uh, benchmark that is uh, using the International Energy Agency uh, for the the overall sector benchmark, and then we are using the um, SDA methodology that is used in the science-based targets, uh, so as to compare the the targets in the future uh, to the sector benchmark, basically. So I hope that uh, answers your question. Thank you, Anis. Great. Um, I think that covers all of the questions, though I can't see the Q&A right now. So if there is anything else that came through that, please let me know. Yeah, uh, it's Edouard. I can't see any more questions in the Q&A uh, space. So for me, I guess we we covered all the questions asked by the, by the attendees. Perfect. Then in that case, uh, thank you. 
very much everyone for joining. Uh, the, we'll share the slides, uh, or at least we'll definitely make them available on the ACT website. Um, and they do include our contact details, so if you do have any questions, please uh, don't hesitate to get in touch. Um, and then we do hope that uh, you got some useful information out of this webinar, uh, and that, that will have encouraged you to uh, apply for the road test. So we look forward to working with all of you. Um, I don't know if any of my other colleagues want to say anything else before we close. Not on my side, so as you see, a lot of companies to road test the ACT methodologies uh, with us, so do not hesitate to, um, uh, to come on board. Great, shall we close uh, our webinar there then? Um, thanks all for attending and um, please reach out if you have any further questions as well. Look forward to seeing you in the road test. Thank you, Esther. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.